guys, welcome back. This is Jenny from Polly's Paper Studio, and today I have a vintage Easter step card for you. And you may be asking why I've gone into Easter so quickly after Valentine, and that is because it is a literal frozen tundra in Michigan right now, and it is snowing, it is a near whiteout blizzard, and tomorrow's high is meant to be negative 30. So I just cannot cope with that, and I have to work with spring-inspired pattern papers and images so that I can transport myself mentally to a warmer, happier place that doesn't involve shoveling. So this is the first um, Easter tutorial I'll be putting up and I will make a playlist so that I can keep these together since this is clearly still January um, but it is time for me to move on from the snow so um, stick with me and we will make this card together so this is the Jubilee collection from authentic papers it is not this year's current collection but it was easy to find readily available so this has all of the vintage images that you expect from authentic papers has a very whimsical little carrots some sheet music and ephemera plaids of course uh floral design here's some lace some checkerboard and a bit of basket weave so i'm using that for my card today so this is really simple and doesn't take a lot of supplies or complicated measuring so um, you can definitely um adjust these step kind of cards to be very elaborate and that is not what I wanted to do. I just wanted it to uh, showcase that beautiful paper. So I have a sheet of 12 by 12 paper and I'm just using this scrap as an example. You would match your own project and I've cut it into two strips that are six inches by the full 12 inch width. The first one I'm scoring at six inches the second one I'm going to score at one and a half and three, then five and seven. So I'm going to also add some double-sided adhesive to the largest portion remaining and that is where we will join these two pieces to make the full step card. I'm just going to line up that a larger piece in the back that has the adhesive with the first six inch section on the first page that we cut and now we have the back of the card <clears throat> and then you can fold up these portions to make a step so my first step is going to be that two inches and then the second step is one and a half inches so that will leave enough to show a complementary pattern underneath. So it will sit up and look like that. That's a very uh, basic, simple step card. And like I said, you could add to it if you wanted something more elaborate. For my finished card, I'm going to use just plain white card stock. And I have already built the base, just like I showed. And then I finished the back. Because if it's a greeting card, you do want to have some room to add a sentiment or a greeting. Um, and so I just used those pattern papers on the back as well and left that spot in the middle. For this collection, I am using the Authentic Ginger Snap 2 cardstock, and it matches perfectly. So I am going to begin layering this just as I would a regular 6-inch greeting card. And I'm going to lay down that first pattern, leaving that nice crisp white border. And that is my first plaid, so the next one may be hard on the camera, uh, but we'll get it covered up pretty quickly. So I'm bringing in that checkered pattern, and I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch of that first plaid showing. And this will also have more of that ginger snap cardstock. And then last but not least, those carrots, which are my favorite pattern of this collection. I think they're just so sweet and whimsical. So I'm going to put that 
right in the middle again, and that is just basically how I would uh, stack the patterns for a traditional 6x6 six six card. But instead of adding all the spacers that I normally do, I'm going to add the extra details to the step portion. So first I'm going to bring in that plaid again, and this is that 2 inch section. So I've cut my paper and cardstock down to fit making sure that I get that centered nicely. And then the next portion will have um, that checkerboard. And why I picked that is because the scale was smaller, so it seemed to read a little bit nicer on this very small strip. So I am going to use the double-sided adhesive tape throughout the project. Um, and that will adhere those layers nicely. So here is the base done and we can begin to add the detail. The first layer I want to put down on the details is going to be this white doily that I die cut from crisp white cardstock. I'll just add that with a bit of hot glue. Because portion of the bottom of this card is going to be hidden behind these steps. I'm going to anchor my focal image a little higher than center and this is the one I chose so it's just that sweet little vintage children playing. They've got their bunny friend and some flowers and I've used that same ginger snap matting on that as well, just to separate the layers. This is a sentiment that came from the bottom of this card. So originally it was a three by four card and I clipped off the sentiment and then used a circle die to cut that out. So I'm just going to add that right here, making sure not to hide any of those words underneath the doily. So this will be the top portion of the card. And I think I want to add the rest of the details here, which is a small, uh, softly colored, this is very sweet, uh, peachy kind of a rosebud on a stem, and this is a white flower with a nice stamen. I put a little bit of twine on that too, and I'm going to just add that here. Once again, making sure that I don't cover up those words or any important parts of that image so that it will look nice in the finish card. And then I've also tied a bow and this is a coral checkerboard satin with a small charm, another twine bow and a vintage button and I'm just going to anchor that on the top putting at it just a little bit of an angle so that uh, I don't disguise any of that image. So I've got one last paper portion here and this is a banner that is die cut from one of the pattern papers. I've put three of them on a double layer of spacer so that I can build up that dimension. So once this is closed, you can see that I am just going to add this to the bottom and slightly to the right because I want most of it to be shown and some of this will go behind the flower arrangement. So I've got that same peachy color rosebud with its companion larger open flower. More of the white flowers, I created these with stamens and then a few leaves and twine bows tucked in. And that is just going to go right here. I want to be very, very, very careful not to glue any of this to the next layer down because I don't want to glue it closed. So I am putting glue only on the very bottom of that and I am just making sure that I don't overlap the edges. And then a couple last details are just going to be some vintage buttons and I think that will be a nice finishing touch for that banner. And that is all for our vintage Easter step card created with the Jubilee collection from Authentic Papers. There's trims from Really Reasonable Ribbon and some flowers from Little Birdie Crafts and some handmade by me. So I will leave links in the description for these uh, if you want to check them out and also links to our social media sites. We are on 
Instagram and Facebook, and we have uh, our Etsy shop and blog, so you can check those out there. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day, and I thank you so much for watching. Bye.